So let's take a look at the story of Cain and Abel in that connection. Of course, the sin is um, Cain's murder of his brother Abel. Why does he uh, murder him? He murders him because God preferred Abel's sacrifice over Cain's. But why did God prefer Abel's sacrifice over Cain? That has been the focus of some discussion and debate over the years. And it illustrates actually a very important characteristic of Hebrew narrative style. Um, as the famous literary uh, critic Robert Alter put it, uh, every culture and every time period tells its stories and writes its poems in different ways. And, and not radically different ways, like we can't understand a Hebrew story uh, coming from a, a background in reading English literature. Uh, but there are different features and characteristics. And, and one of the features that Alder noted in Hebrew storytelling or narrative style is um, what he called the reticent narrator. The narrator doesn't make uh, his presence known in an explicit way by making evaluations or, or talking about character motivations, or even giving a lot of physical description. There's some of that, but not a lot. Not as much as you'd find, for instance, in the 19th century English novel. So we have to look for the subtle clues that the narrator puts in the text. And so when we read <clears throat> in uh, <clears throat> Genesis 4, uh, we read that, and I'll pick it up, in the second half of verse 2, it says, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions, from some of the firstborn of his flock. Did you notice it? Um, Abel brought the best. He brought an offering, which was from the firstborn of his flock, fat portions. Whereas Cain brought some vegetables, all right? So Cain brings the ordinary, Abel brings the best. Uh, this reveals their heart. And of course, God then confronts Cain. And Cain, of course, could have repented and responded with a proper offering. But rather than that, he goes out and he murders his brother. Uh, sin. God then tells Cain that he will judge him. How? By making him a wanderer. In other words, expelling him yet further out from Eden. Um, and indeed, that's what happens at the end of the chapter. Cain becomes a wanderer. But we see, too, the token of grace. Uh, Cain responds to God's judgment by talking about the dangers out there from other people, violence. And uh, God shows his care for the sinful Cain by giving him a token of his grace, which is by giving him some kind of mark. And we don't know what the mark was, and uh, unfortunately there have been... Uh, unjustified speculations about what the mark was. That's not important to our understanding of the story. What is important is to identify it as a token of God's continuing grace. 